Boyer, Herbie Hyde makes his return tonight, adding his illustrious name to a British heavyweight scene that's already buzzing with excitement. Hoping to spoil the comeback is Kettering tough guy Derek McCafferty. He's scheduled for eight rounds. Well, Herbie Hyde's not exactly the most uh, popular man here in Nottingham. His uh, entrance was greeted with a cacophony of boos and uh, catcalls. Terry O'Connor, a big man himself, refereeing these two heavyweights. Eight three-minute rounds are scheduled for, and the man in the black trunks coming out of the red corner is the former two-time WBO heavyweight champion of the world, weighing in at a quarter of a pound under 16 stone, a career heaviest. Herbie Hyde, now 31 years old, born in Lagos, Nigeria, based in Norwich, and his opponent, well, we've seen many times before. He's the big fella born in Aberdeen and based in Kettering, Derek McCafferty, who at 17 stone two. Is about 16 pounds heavier than the former world champion. And while we remember all what Herbie Hyde has achieved, Richie Riddle, I think we have to remember what happened to him some 18 months ago when he was stopped by the man from Zambia, Joseph Chingangu, who stopped him in two rounds, and Herbie's chin looked on that night as if he was, it was made of porcelain. Yeah, he certainly did. And, uh, we thought that his career was literally over there on that night, didn't we? But uh, he's here back. He looks pretty trim and looks sharp. Uh, I think he's changed uh, trainers or whatever, so it's a, it's a new look, Herbie Hyde. Well, he's based himself in Las Vegas, and he's been trained by well, two very well-known names in the world of boxing down the years. The former three world champion, Mike McCallum, and the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Eddie Mustafa Mohammed. And Herbie Hyde has uh, issued uh, two or three considerable verbal challenges since he's uh, been back in the UK to one Audley Harrison. I'm not sure whether he's in Audley Harrison's immediate plans or indeed is uh, Frank Bruno in Audley Harrison's immediate plans if Frank Bruno ever gets a licence to come back into the ring. But in the meantime, Audley Harrison's second professional opponent, Derek McCafferty, is in against Herbie Hyde midway through the first, the schedule for eight. McCafferty big and solid, won his opening two professional contests, but uh, has lost all the others since then. This is his 17th professional fight. Hyde trying to get through with the right hand. Well, that was a bit on the low side. Hyde working at the uh, midriff of Derek McCafferty, just puffing and blowing a little bit. McCafferty was about 16 six three weeks ago when he was outpointed by uh, Matthew Ellis so he's put on well over half a stone since it's been a good opening round from Hyde staying on the outside working well with the jab looking nice and sharp um, hasn't landed with any real big solid punches they've all all just been like scoring jabs scoring shots but nevertheless good opening round from Herbie Hyde and fast hands from him and he really Number 16 Stone looks in terrific shape, but we said that some 18 months ago and he was uh, completely ambushed by Joseph Shingangu of Zambia, who incidentally went on to lose his next three contests by KO, and that puts the Hyde victory into perspective. Break, break, sit back, both of you. Cafferty's sweating up already, but I'm sure he warmed up quite well in his dressing room. And Hyde has eased himself back into, well, perhaps uh, part three of his professional career. There he is, the 1989 ABA finalist when he lost to one Henry Akinwande. And turned pro at just 18 years of age, now 31. And has a terrific record. 35 professional contests, 32 wins, and 31 of those by a knockout. But his three defeats have come by stoppage. Looking reasonably composed after his uh, return to the ring after some 18 months. Across the ring, now 34 years of age, Derek McCafferty. Back in the ring just over three from uh, after just over three weeks. Seconds out. Round two. So Derek McCafferty, who took Audie Harris in six rounds in Newcastle in September of 2001, the night that Herbie Hyde was stopped by Joseph Shingangu. Has been in with uh, most of the top ten heavyweights in Britain, including Mark Potter, Pelly Reid and former champion Michael Holden. 
All three of them stopped him. Hyde hoping to do the same. There's some great, great variation in Hyde's work here, throwing some uppercuts, some hooks, obviously the straight shots. But yeah, he, as I've said, he's keeping nice and nimble, nice and agile. And he is very quick on his feet for a heavyweight to be Hyde. And that's the problem that Derek McCafferty has got tonight. He just can't cope with the, with the pace of Hyde actually moving around him. Every time McCafferty sets to throw a shot, Hyde is in a different place altogether. So uh, that's the problem for Derek McCafferty tonight. Again, Hyde using that good variation. The, there's a nasty-looking swelling underneath the left eye of Derek McCafferty, who a you know, good old trial horse. I'm sure he won't mind me calling him that, that he is. Keeps on coming forward. Takes just about to every contest at pretty short notice. Hyde tends to have those uh, hands of his held a little bit far apart, Richie, and the left is rather low, and he needs to be careful, although McCafferty, to be fair, is not known as a big puncher. No, but that's how he's got caught in the past, Jim, and that's how uh, you know, he's been he's been beaten here behind. He's got a very low left hand, and what McCafferty should be trying to do is land, he's stepping in and, and bringing that right hand over the top, because here behind, he's wide open for that shot. Look, and there, he's not too far away, there he was. Hyde holding onto the ropes, which he's not allowed to do, and took that shot right round the middle of his back somewhere, so McCafferty's accuracy not quite there. Hyde lost his WBO title the first time to uh, Riddick Bow, that was low. That really was low, keep it up, that's not the first time. And then he won it back again and lost it to uh, Vladimir Klitschko, one of the fighting Klitschko brothers. Bit of blood somewhere on McCafferty's uh, temple. I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. But again, good variation by Hyde, who's uh, been very busy. And again, I think Rich, we have to emphasize that he's in great shape. Yeah, he looks he looks in terrific condition here behind. Uh, but he always has done. I mean, there's no doubt about it. When we seen when we seen him actually get beat, not so long back, um, he looked in great shape there. But. Uh, he look, you've got to say he looks in good condition and having a bloke like Mark, uh, Mike McCallum, former world champion, in your corner, that, that's an honour in itself. And he was such a great middleweight. And a great light middleweight and a great light heavyweight. A little flurry by McCafferty and Hyde on the retreat for the first time, not doing any harm. It's not all about coming forward, you've got to work when you're on the retreat as well. So how I wonder in the corner will they view the opening couple of rounds. Hyde up on the toes, that was uh, well underneath the waistband, that's a little bit on the low side. With that left hand of his, McCafferty's punch is falling short. Hyde got himself caught right at the end of the round and for the first time had to hold on, but there wasn't uh, too much coming from McCafferty. I suppose at this stage of his career, it's important to get rounds. Well, that's right, and uh, not only that, Jim, this is a, a well-picked opponent for her behind, because Derek McCafferty is very durable, and he should take him um, He should take him the six rounds. And he's big and he's much heavier. Here we go, clearing. Seconds out. Round three. Two rounds gone, and uh, I think this one's scheduled for eight three-minute runs, but Herbie Hyde, I'm sure, has trained for at least that. Derek McCafferty, too. Hyde, a lot of water around that uh, face and torso of his, which hasn't been wiped away by the corner. There's a little left hook one in by Hyde, and that was our right on the button. That was a good shot by him. McCafferty having to cover, cover up now. I don't think Terry O'Connor will let McCafferty take too much. Remember, he has been stopped by four previous opponents. And that was a solid left. And McCafferty really wobbled there. Hyde took the, Hyde took the foot off the pedal and stepped back. Good fast hands by Herbie Hyde. And McCafferty in a bit of trouble here. With not even one minute of the third round gone. Yeah, some great shots going in from Hyde. Lovely left hook started all off. But I've got to say the referee's been a little bit lenient here. Um, Hyde again was worn there for, for a low shot. And he's thrown three or four punches. That look there again. That isn't too far away um, from, from being a low punch. Just got to watch what he's doing here, Hyde. Well, good professional that he is. McCaffrey just drew the referee's attention to it. And Terry O'Connor hasn't done anything. 
way through this, the third. Chopping right from high. McCafferty's problem all the way through his career is that he doesn't really oh, throw enough shots. Stop that was low again. That really was low. So that's a point that's been taken away from Herbie Hyde. I don't think he looks terribly phased by it, but uh, that was almost inevitable. Some of those shots, especially with the left, Richie, have been straying far too low. Yeah, much too low, and uh, I totally agree with the referee there that uh, my point should have been deducted. He's been lucky up to now. Three or four punches have been low, and uh, the referee had to act, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Whether it's a, a lack of timing on the, part, on the part of Herbie Hyde or deliberate intent with those low blows, but there are far too many of them coming in. And I think maybe he's going down below because he sort of sees that McCaffrey is maybe not just the, the tightest person in the midriff section, and also that the big fella has got his hands held up fairly high. So Hyde has to try to find the target where he can. Yeah, I mean, he's got a nice high guard, hasn't he? So, um, yeah, I mean, Hyde has got to vary, vary the punches and go downstairs. Yes, he has, but... Uh, He's literally some of those punches, he's not even looking where he's throwing them, and, and that's why uh, a, a couple of them have straight a little bit too low. Yeah, McCaffrey, although he's taller, leans in and he keeps his elbows fairly low and tight in, so Hyde's having trouble just getting the accuracy. Well, that's going to be an even round simply because Herbie Hyde had a, a point deducted. a good solid round the corner right hand from the former two-time WBO champion uh, he wasn't really able to press home the advantage oh my goodness me that really was uh, teeth rattling that certainly was very low that certainly will uh, send your breakfast somewhere up oh dear me there's another one well I mean the first one was bad enough but the second was so blatant it wasn't true great survivor Derek McCaffrey very pleasant big fella. Didn't start boxing professionally until he was 30. Oh, Hyde was uh, in his teens when he started his pro career. Second up, round four. There's a little caution in Herbie Hyde's direction from uh, referee Terry O'Connor about the low blows. Let's see if it'll have any effect. Cafferty just comes plodding forward. There's another one went in. My goodness. Well, Herb Hyde is saying that, that, that McCafferty is actually tucking up and he can't get through to him, but even so, Richie, you're still not meant to hit the man low. No, it's, I mean, I mean, Herbie would say that, wouldn't he? But, you know, you've got to say it's not just the odd shot that's going, going in low. It must be like six or seven punches now that have been low. And uh, I, I have to agree with the ref. I think he's been leaning up, lenient up until the stage where I got the warning and something had to be done. But Herbie Hyde really has to watch what he's doing here. Well, there again, I think, another case trying to just draw down the hands of McCafferty, who's sensible fellow that he is, is keeping his gloves up towards the side of the head and his elbows well tucked in. So Hyde has to work out some other way of getting to him. Good footwork by Hyde, but then McCafferty is not exactly the, the quickest thing in the world. He's not going to give Paula Radcliffe too many sleepless nights. Good job by McCafferty. Hyde seems to be looking pretty comfortable. His chin hasn't been tested so far. He's holding on to the ropes, which he's not allowed to do. Well, at this stage, Richie, is this a, a performance from Herbie Hyde that's going to worry Audley Harrison or anybody else in the heavyweight division? I wouldn't have thought so, to be quite honest. I mean, as I've said, I mean, he looks impressive and he's boxing well here, but, um, you know, you've got, with all with all due respect to Derek McCafferty, you've got to sum up, sum up the, 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 the class of opposition he's up against here tonight. And McCafferty, he's doing... I mean, you've got to take your hat off to Derek McCafferty. He's doing a great job. Keeping a nice high guard, getting through with the odd shot, and Herbie Hyde just isn't penetrating enough. Forward and Hyde 
moving from side to side. Once again, that run the corner body shot from McCafferty landing in the, in the kidney region is not so good. 30 seconds to go to the end of the fourth round. McCafferty has blocked just about every single headshot that Hyde has thrown so far. This time it's McCafferty's turn to uh, incur the referee's displeasure. Another kidney shot went in. One wonders just how much of a, a blow to Herbie Hyde's confidence defeat by the Zambian Joseph Ngangu was in September of 2001 in Newcastle. Certainly he's been talking a good fight ever since he returned to Britain and even long before that, having been based in Las Vegas now for quite some time. Some action from the middle of that round. Hyde just uh, trying to get through. Round the corner left wasn't too far from the target. But McCaffrey just comes plodding straight forward. And he's like a, well, a little chieftain tank. You've got to really take him out. And Hyde holding onto the ropes there and hitting with that left. And referee quite rightly saying that you're not allowed to do that. And Hyde, I think, acknowledged it. So what must he be thinking, Richie? Well, he, he'll be a little bit frustrated at this stage because, he, he, as I said, he can't get there. He was telling shots home that the bigger punches, but he's got to start throwing some feints, Jim. He's got to try and uh, get the guard down to David McCafferty. Um, at this stage, he's not doing that. <coughs> McCafferty is very predictable. He's coming forward with a high guard. So what Herbie Hyde has got to do, he's got to, you know, try and sell him a few feints and just try and draw his guard down a little bit. But he's not doing that. He's doing himself, Herbie Hyde, being too predictable with the single punch. Hyde once again going a little bit on the low side with the left, but it just grazed off the elbow of Derek McCafferty. Well, McCafferty's lost three times to uh, Mark Totter, who recently lost to Michael Sprott in a British title eliminator. He's lost to Sprott himself, lost to former champion Michael Holden, and twice to the unbeaten Georgian, Gorgi Kandalaki. Better work by Hyde this time. Left round, the guard of McCafferty, but McCafferty just comes steamrolling forward. Hyde hands held low. Obviously doesn't reckon that McCafferty has the hand speed to get to him, but you never know. He thought that about Joseph Chingangu from 18 months ago. And got well and truly dismantled. Round the corner, body shot once again from McCafferty. Midway through the fifth. Again, a lot of single punches coming from Hyde, but a little bit better from Hyde there with a couple of one-twos, but the majority of the work is single shots but he's also i mean obviously Hyde is going to the body he's gonna he's trying to bring the arms down so he's trying to soften his opponent up with those body shots to bring his to bring his guard down a little bit but again it, it's not happening Hyde moving quite nicely again single shots by him but again McCafferty blocking it off a lot of that was a good offer cut Needed to follow it up with the left. And obviously, despite all the hard work that's been done in the ring, your, your timing's bound to be off when you get into serious competitive boxing, Rich. Yeah, it is. But, uh, I mean, Hyde, for me, he's, he's impressed me tonight with um, his, ring, his ring craft, his ring work. He's used the, the ring very well. He's looked at, you know, he's in good, cheap, good shape. He's obviously trained hard. But <laughs> it's been too many single shots, and he just... But having said that, Jim, you're up against a very tough guy. This fella is very, very durable. Um, and not many people stop Derek McCafferty, it's got to be said. McCafferty again with the right hand. Not having any effect on Herbie Hyde. Who, uh, well, the shoulders have just slumped a little bit. I'm just wondering, is he uh, settling to ease himself back into boxing and go the full eight rounds? He certainly was talking as if he was going to blow Derek McCafferty away and then on to greater things in terms of... Uh, Aldi Harrison in particular. 
big wild swing there from McCafferty and Hyde certainly uh, moved out of the way pretty easily and taunted his man slightly, which I don't like to see. That wasn't a bad shot by um, Herbie Hyde. Caught him just about and no more with a good right hand. Well, just the uh, one round shared and it's been all Hyde, but it hasn't been a hugely impressive Herbie Hyde, you have to say. No, um, no, it hasn't been a hugely impressive Herbie Hyde, but having said that, he's won every round apart from the round that he got the warn in, and that was an even round. So, um, I don't know how you, you actually look upon it. I mean, he's won every round apart from that round, and yet we're saying he's not that been impressive. Well, in his 32 victories, Herbie Hyde, the only person that's uh, taken in the distance was a former World Heavyweight title challenger, Juan Everett, Bigfoot Martin, and that was uh, in September of 93 away in Norwich, Herbie Hyde's home patch. Everybody else fell by the wayside, apart, of course, from the three men who beat him. Well, a little change in tactics here straight away, Jim, from Herbie Hyde. He's not running anymore, not his and moving. He's, um, he's standing his ground here and he's, he's trying to counter McCafferty with a sharp right hand over the top. McCafferty may well think about throwing that right of his own with Hyde's left a little bit on the low side. Somebody's lace, I think, is undone. Yeah, it's Herbie Hyde, so McCafferty goes to the neutral corner. Timeout called by referee uh, Terry O'Connor. Seems to be fine. Oh. Hyde, just a shade under 16 stones, the heaviest he's uh, ever been. And one of his problems against uh, the bigger men who beat him, Riddick Bo, Vladimir Klitschko, and even Joseph uh, Chingangu, they were all a stone to two stones heavier than him. Yeah, Hyde's been a heavyweight. Um, He's been at the lower end of the scale, hasn't he, with the heavyweights in terms of weight. The guys now, like your Lennox Lucin, were up nearly 18 stones, 17 and a half stones. They really are big fellas. And Herbie Hyde, when he first started out as a, as a heavyweight, he was what, weighing 15 and a half stones, something like that. He's bulked up a little bit now, but he's never been the biggest of heavyweights, it's got to be said. Well, Nigel Ben was the dark destroyer. Herbie Hyde built himself as the dancing destroyer. in great shape as we've said before and he's bouncing up and down in the toes and McCafferty hasn't really been able to get to him has Hyde settled for uh, an eight round points win which well at this stage it looks like that way doesn't it um, I think we're all a little bit disappointed in Herbie, Herbie tonight mainly because he's been a, obviously a world champion he's a time WBO world champion and you expect a little bit more it has to be said um, from him but um, it's been a good good points display, but as heavyweight, you always expect to see either a knockout or you, you expect to see your shots landing and having more more of an effect on an opponent, and that certainly hasn't happened for, for Herbie Hyde tonight. McCafferty just leaning on and losing that, using that extra tonnage of his. Hyde simply can't keep him away. McCafferty has come forward inexorably. Just a few seconds ago, and then two more rounds. Cavity's face marking up very badly, swollen under both eyes. Hyde, well, was a slip. Have no worry, that was a slip. Hyde had a glance to his corner who told him to come forward. Uh, a little bit late for that at the end of the round, and Derek McCafferty is still there. So he's gone. Exactly the same distance with the former two-time WBO champion of the world as he did with uh, Audley Harrison. And this is a case of uh, Herbie Richie, as they say in America, been able to talk the talk, but so far hasn't walked the walk. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to say that, don't you? I mean, he spoke a good fight before this fight on what he was going to do to Derek McCafferty, and it certainly hasn't happened tonight. He's in it, you know, I mean, he's streets ahead in terms of points. But that knockout, we just haven't seen. It hasn't, it hasn't been forthcoming, so... But there's still, uh, what, two rounds left? Seconds out! 
Round seven. Well, Herbie Hyde uh, has come back to the ring after that huge crushing demolition some 18 months ago by the relatively unheralded Zambian Joseph Jingangu. And Jingangu, after that, let me tell you, lost to uh, an American Derek Brown who stopped him in five. He was stopped by Telly Reid and he was stopped by the Danish Foxer Stefan Nielsen. And now Hyde maybe has it up a little bit. There's uh, some blood coming in the mouth of Derek McCafferty. He's having to cover up now. And McCafferty in a little bit of trouble at the start of the seventh round. And perhaps after all, we've done Herbie an injustice and he's uh, eased himself back into this. That was a very low blow. That was low again. But I'm surprised that that didn't get anything more than a, a very brief verbal caution from Terry O'Connor. Well, it all started there, Jim, with a terrific right uppercut from Hyde, right at the start of the round. It caught McCafferty off guard, if you like. Great shot through the middle, and then, and then he got caught with the left hook after that. And to Herbie, he, he sensed victory there, and he really went for it. But, you know, fair play to McCafferty. He's, he's come through the storm, but it was much better from Herbie Hyde with some real big punches there. Hyde's puffing a little bit. The mouth has opened very slightly, and you can almost hear him from ringside just then. Uh, Puffing, that's another right hand which was just about on the belt and no more. No complaints from good old pro McCafferty. Solid right, he stopped it. He stopped it. That wasn't a bad decision, to be quite honest. McCafferty was never going to win it. And he shouldn't, at this stage of his career, be allowed to take any hard shots. A lot of people will say there's booing coming right. But I have to say full marks to Terry O'Connor for that. That was a good decision, Richie. Yeah, that was a fair decision, wasn't it? I mean, Irby Hyde landed with some great shots at the start of the round. And uh, we don't want to see anyone get hurt in this game. And he was he was just taking a few unnecessary shots at the end there. And uh, there wasn't no complaints from John McCafferty. So that was a good decision by the referee. Well, Herbie Hyde uh, mixed the good with the fairly ordinary in the opening six rounds. But when it mattered and he came out for the seventh, he uh, picked up the pace. And Terry O'Connor had a good look at the face of Derek McCaffrey. He got caught by a couple of hard shots early on in the round and uh, decided quite rightly that there wasn't any point in letting the uh, very gallant Derek McCaffrey, the Aberdonian based in Kettering, to take any more than he had to. So Herbie Hyde back into the ring and back to his uh, winning ways. This is a uh, 36th professional contest, his 33rd professional win, and his 32nd inside the distance, just for the record. So we'll get the official uh, announcement from referee Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, after 1 minute 27 seconds of round 7, in the interest of uh, Derek McCavity's safety, the referee has stopped the contest. The winner, Herbie Hyde! Disappointed by the booing, it may not be the most popular guy. Ladies and gentlemen, your uh, appreciation is great. Derek McCaffrey. He's come here to do what he had to do, and he's got back in winning ways, and you can't say fairer than that. No, I mean, it was um, a fair performance from Herbie. He, he, he certainly looked good tonight in stages, and he produced uh, um, a better finish, you have to say, and landed with some good shots at the end. So overall, he'll be pleased he's got back to winning ways. And uh, just a little bit disappointed with the crowd, but, you know, that's boxing, Jim. Well, Herbie back to winning ways after that hugely disappointing effort last time out in Newcastle against the Zambian has uh, made or rather stumbled his way to ringside and uh, he's going to be spoken with by uh, Mike Costello Herbie first time back after 18 months what did you make of that you know to be honest I loved in there listen Ozzy Harrison Danny Williams Bruno I heard these men come back them guys can't touch me because Boxing, my last fight lost, but you have to bear man. Lennox Lewis, everybody get beat. One punch, you make a mistake, boom, it can't for you. But I'm back again. I'm 31 years old. And I'll be listen, I'll beating up all those guys. You know, this guy here, one thing he had, I know he's a bum, but I never got punched. But I beat him up every round, you know. But I'm I'm back again. I tell you the crowd here haven't taken to you. Does that concern you? It doesn't really make any difference to me. They talk about Jesus Christ. They, they crucified Muhammad Ali. They booed Ali. They booed Lennox Lewis. People love Lewis now. Remember when he started? Everybody used to boo him. He was promoted by Barry Hearn and me. Lewis was hated. All of a sudden now he's one of the title. Odell Harrison. They booed him when he fought. But other people, it doesn't really make any difference. I'm back. This time it's for real. Let me have a word with your co-trainer Mike McCallum. You mentioned there the body snatcher. Mike, is that something that you've been trying to get into Herbie's repertoire? Yeah, Herbie had a lot of good attributes in terms of boxing. He's good reflexes, 
He's very quick, got good legs, and he moves nice inside the side. Good right hand. Now the body shots, we gotta have that to his repertoire. That's all we're doing right now, Mian Hede. Trying to get him more focused on the body so he can go to the body and also box, body shots, move side to side, do everything that he, he can do, he can do well. But he caught the man cleanly, time and again to the head, and didn't really look like getting him going for a long that's time. With that concern, that, that, that's the guy's job. He haven't fought. He haven't fought in a year and a half. Two years. Two years. This is his first fight. Everything ain't gonna be perfect all at one. We're gonna take it nice and slow, one day at a time, and we'll get him right. Today was a beautiful. You see, he haven't fought. He has to come back, get the rust off, thinking about fighting for a long time. So he's getting. And as we go along, I guarantee you, he's gonna get better and better right back. Tell us, Herbie, why are you back? To take on the best of why Britain or the is, best in the world? Why I'm back is this, because life is about going down. I was down at bottom. I was here. I, I have to pick myself up and bring myself to the top again. It's easy to, to knock me. It's easy to say, well, he got knocked out. But you got to remember, everybody gets beat up. Everybody. But I'm 31 years old. I haven't been beat up. I don't get hit. How many times do you see me get punched? I'm sleeping, writhing, made it look easy. I could have stopped him, but I was in, on my loom, on my brother's, on my mother's life. I was enjoying it in there. Eddie said to me, Mike, he said, me, take it easy, enjoy yourself. I remember, a lot of my fights was always quick, quick, quick. I just want to come back. I'm walking, I'm training to be up, start off. Next fight might be Michael Holden, um, then then Danny William, Julius Francis, Odell Harrison, Frank Brown, all of them. Listen, we, in, today in Britain, Lennox Lewis, you have to give him the respect, he's the man. After Lewis, we, I believe I am the man. Forget about Audrey. I used to beat him up 20, I used to beat him up 20. 24 hours a day, seven days with two times on Saturday. Audrey, last time I was fine, I was fine, I was fighting on his bill. They paid me so I couldn't tell you guys how much I beat him up. But why are you disrespecting a man in the same profession as you? You just said I'm it's such a hard game. How am I dissing him for? I, I, I'm, I'm telling you I'm the man. How am I, who, so who am I dissing? You or the fighter or Audrey? You're calling Audrey Audrey. He is Audrey, isn't he? Ali called for it. He's all draining. We'll let you go away and do your homework. Thanks for your time. This is nobody. I'm just happy to be back.